Yeah, all right, interesting. Um, all right, I will go to more questions. Um, here's one. Uh, the The question says that your book has been described as ambitiously re revisionist, quote unquote, by New York Times Book Review. How does that resonate with you knowing there is so much alternative information out there? Well, I, I think uh, um, uh, the kind reviewer at the, the New York Times is giving me a compliment in the sense that uh, revision can mean in history to look again at the sources and come up with a different interpretation of them. Uh, and so certainly that was what I was trying to do. So I think it's a, it's a fair description of the book. Uh, and a lot of the conclusions that I come to surprised me uh, because although I had been studying this material uh, uh, for 40 years, uh, um, you know, when you sit down to make a connected account, uh, things start to look different to you and you see connections or you see dis disruptions that you hadn't seen before. Uh, and um, uh, I was surprised sometimes at some of my own conclusions and certainly the picture that emerges is substantially different from other uh, historians, uh, Maxime Rodensan or Montgomery Watt or uh, F.E. Peters, if you think about the biographies of the prophet that have been written by other academics. Uh, this is a, a, a very different take on the material. Uh, and it, it's partly different because I do make the Quran my primary source. Uh, and so, if it's not in the Quran, I don't have much to say about it. Uh, and I do admit some later material, uh, but only if uh, there's substantial evidence for its, uh, 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 its validity. Okay. Well, there's a long question here about sources that the Western academia is kind of... Um, critical of the Islamic sources and uh, or and that there's a, there's a, under the influence of anti-Islamic orientalist sentiments uh, like Montgomery Watt is a more of a friendly orientalist than than others who have kind of have an axe to grind against Islam and Muslims uh, do you think that's changing the like firstly use of Muslim sources as a credible source in the Western academia and also uh, how much bias are, is there in the Western academia towards Islamic history? Oh, I think there's tremendous bias against uh, uh, Islam in Western in the Western Academy. Uh, and um, I think, you know, it, it's it's a fault of the Western Academy because uh, I think most Western academics have a relatively positive view of the, the other world religions. Uh, but when it comes to Islam, uh, I think that uh, there's a tendency to, to see it in a negative light. Uh, and um, some of the negative reviews my book has uh, received have been from people who I think don't like Islam very much and, and, and don't approve of a relatively positive uh, image of its founding. Um, but I think the issue of how we view the Abbasid uh, sources, because most of them are Abbasid era uh, that are in doubt, uh, is, is, a, is a different issue. Uh, and I think that there, there are things in the Abbasid sources that certainly are untrue and which reflect badly on Islam. And they're very different from what's in the Quran. Uh, so just very briefly, if I might, uh, to give you an example. Um, uh, in uh, uh, Surah Al-Balad, uh, the Quran addresses the Prophet. And uh, it talks about how this is Al-Balad Al-Amin, right? It, it is a secure city. It's a city of peace. And, uh, you know, in in Arabian culture, there were uh, uh, Haram and, and Hema were uh, places of peace where you shouldn't fight. In Hema, you shouldn't even cut down trees or hunt animals. 
Mecca was a sanctuary of that sort. It was a, a zone of peace uh, where feuding was not allowed. And um, so the Quran calls it the uh, Balad al and then it's, it addresses Muhammad and it says, and you are hell in this city. Um, uh, hell uh, in this case almost certainly means legitimate, you know, you, like we might say a citizen with all the rights of a citizen uh, in this city. Uh, and it's, it's a, a pushback against those Meccan pagans who were seeing the prophet as somehow illegitimate. So no, you're a Meccan, you, you're, a, you're hell in this city. Uh, the, of course, the, the, the word, uh, the, the verb, uh, you know, hella uh, uh, can mean to make something allowed that otherwise would be haram. And um, uh, in the Abbasid period, hundreds of years later, uh, it was common if you, if you, if the king didn't like somebody, uh, wanted to persecute him, he would make his blood hal. It means you could kill him. Otherwise, murder is 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 haram, right? But it's forbidden. But if no. if the authorities declare that you that that your uh, blood is is halal, then you can be killed. So uh, the, the later Abbasid sources saw that power of the king to kill people at will uh, as as making him hell. And so in mm -hmm. In some of the tafsirs of the exegesis of the of the Quran in the Abbasid period, when they come to this verse, they say this means Muhammad can kill whoever he wants. And this is the same book that says that if, if somebody uh, does evil to you, you should be good. You should do good towards them. How likely is it that, that it's saying Muhammad is a you know can can kill people at will? I just want to tear my hair out when I see something like this. So mm. in that sense, I think we should be skeptical sometimes of these later sources because they're not saying, they're not giving us the kind of sentiments that we find in the Quran itself. Yeah, thank you. That's almost like, uh, I don't know, some modern day extremists looking at Quran and seeing extremist interpretations that's similar to that, yeah. isn't it? Uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, but thank you very much for your book. Uh, it was uh, definitely a fresh uh, insight. Perhaps one last question. Um, there, there's some questions that I, 